Hi, I'm Mark Pritchett. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. I have a specialist interest in shoulder and elbow surgeries. One of the most common problems I see in my practice is uh, problems with the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is a group of muscles that basically wrap around the proximal humerus. They start from the shoulder blade and they move out towards and around the proximal humerus or the shoulder. The, the main use is to initiate movement of the arm, uh, i.e. lift the arm to the side. And they call the rotator cuff is because they envelop the whole of the proximal humerus or, or upper, upper arm. So rotator cuff problems are extremely common. Uh, about 30 to 40 percent of the, the, the whole patient base that I see present with rotator cuff problems. And that can range from anywhere from a tendonitis, which is just an inflammation of the tendon, anywhere through to a hole that's developed over time or occasionally traumatically. Most people present with spontaneous onset of shoulder pain, predominantly on movements above chest height or anything above their heads. They often present with night pain, which is probably one of the worst uh, symptoms that they can suffer from. Obviously, keeping people awake at night is not a great thing. One of the biggest problems people have as well is, is, is problems dressing. So tucking their arms into shirts, jackets, reaching for seat belts, and in particular with ladies, reaching around behind to get their, their bra straps and, and do those up in the morning. And sometimes it's a real struggle and they have to modify their, the way they put um, or any of their clothing on. So most people with rotator cuff problems don't present with significant stiffness. The problem they have with moving their arm is because of pain. And that's often how we differentiate between something like a frozen shoulder, which causes significant stiffness and pain, to rotator cuff problems, which don't tend to cause true stiffness of the, of the shoulder. So we use many modalities to help the diagnosis. One of the main things with any shoulder problems is, is taking a, a good history. So asking the patients what's, what's gone on, what's gone wrong with them, when do they have problems, how it was brought on, how long has it been going on, and then really making a, an in-depth examination. By the time we've done that, more often than not, we have a good idea of what the pathology may be. And then the diagnostic modalities we use to confirm those, i.e. the special tests, you know, uh, are the clinical examination techniques, and then on to the type of investigations, and those investigations can range from plain x-rays, which are commonly used, then to ultrasound and MRI. And normally we have to do either one or two of those to confirm the diagnosis that we've, we've made in the first place. Once we've examined someone, taken a good history, and we've, we've performed whatever investigations we want, which are commonly ultrasounds or MRI scans, once we've diagnosed that they may just have tendonitis or cuff pain without a hole in the tendon or a rotator cuff tear, then the, the primary treatment for that is often corticosteroid injections or cortisone, you, you may know them as. And those injections are extremely powerful anti-inflammatory injections, and they're given into a space just above the rotator cuff tendons, and they dampen down on that inflammation. And they often imp significantly improve daytime pain, but more importantly, nighttime pain. And what they enable people to do then is be pushed further through uh, physiotherapy and strengthening techniques. And, and often, that's the, the full treatment that's necessary for someone without a rotator cuff tear who has rotator cuff pain. If you're unfortunate to have a rotator cuff tear, particularly a degenerative rotator cuff tear, then normally you present within the 45 to 75 year age group. And then, depending on how old you are and what your functional demands are, occasionally you can still treat those with a corticosteroid injection, reduce the inflammation, and then physiotherapy. But that's more often used in the older age group. Uh, the younger age group are predominantly treated with surgery, but obviously that's after discussion with the patient of whether they'd like to undergo surgery. And again, in the younger age group, particularly the, um, uh, the manual workers who are self-employed, then they may not want to take the time out to have surgery and they may want something to tie them over. But surgery is the gold standard treatment for the younger age group with a rotator cuff tear. If you have a symptomatic rotator cuff tear and surgery has been decided on after the consultation between yourself and I, on the day of surgery, you come in in the morning, obviously starved, you normally have a general anaesthetic and what's called a regional block. And what that is, is a little injection in the neck and, and that means when you wake up, you'll be pain-free. That normally lasts about a day and a half. 
then surgery takes about an hour to an hour and a half depending on the severity of the tear and it's normally carried out through a keyhole surgery so an arthroscopic surgery where you have probably about four holes uh, where, where the instruments are passed in. Uh, what's nice about that we can take photographs to show exactly what's gone on at the time of surgery. So that takes about an hour to hour and a half then you recover on the ward you'll be in a sling for approximately six weeks. Uh, and during that time, for the first two weeks, it's, you do very little. Uh, elbow movements mostly uh, on their own. We teach you how to dress and how to put your clothes on and how to toilet yourselves with a little bit of assistance. Uh, the six week mark, you'll find yourself still very stiff uh, and that normally carries on for about three to four months post-surgery. From the point of view of function, uh, at six weeks, you can really do almost all you want to do, but you will be stiff. You can drive when you feel capable and safe to drive, and it's your responsibility at that time. And then physiotherapy will bring on both your range of movement and your strength. Manual work sh probably should be avoided for about three months. And the important thing about the first six weeks is the fact that you shouldn't really try to lift the arm under its own volition or on, on its own, because that will put tension on the repair, because these are the muscles that lift your arm uh, uh, to raise your arm above your head.